Hello and welcome back to Jack Knives Reviews. I'm of course your host, Jack Knives. Today I'll be reviewing the Max Original Doom Patrol. They are quite doomed. After a horrifying accident, race car driver Cliff Steele wakes up under the care of scientist Niles Calder. However, the only part that remains left is his brain, which Niles has now put into a robotic mechanical body to keep him alive. Cliff lives in Doom Manor with people much like him who also have tragic backstories and superpowers. Niles dreams of putting this group of super freaks together to fight a man who lives in multiple dimensions, a shapeshifter, and monster butts, just to name a few. Together they have to save the world despite all of the odds as the Doom Patrol. I have been so invested in this show. A little bit of backstory. I procured the first series after it had come out from DC Universe app. I know it's a long thing that people forgot about. The show originated on the DC Universe app and then eventually it got bought out by HBO Max and then it finally went to Max. For context, I had first seen this show when it first came out and I had never seen a show like this, but it was hard to come by and it kept stalling with post-production. Not since Stranger Things had I seen a show that had so much production hell, but I'd never seen a show, especially trying to adapt almost an unadaptable story as Grant Morrison's run on Doom Patrol. I absolutely love this show. I think it's one of the most creatively genius, messed up, funny, dark, hilarious, raunchy, gross, knee-slapping funny shows with a really good, well-written drama sprinkled with superheroes. And if that sounds like it's confusing, that's because the show is. I mean, the characters are essential. All of these superheroes were just created. We're all victims of circumstances and forced to be superheroes because that's pretty much what they are. The entire cast of Doom Patrol is phenomenal. April Bowlby, who plays Rita Farr, does this great balance between the 1940s aspect style of acting, but also having this relatable motherly, almost grandmotherly kind of mentality, and I loved her for that. Diane Guerrero, before she was known for Encanto, as Crazy Jane, I love the character of Crazy Jane. From A to Z, she's one of the best written character, I think, in any semblance of fictional television. I loved her so much in this. Matt Bomer plays Larry Trainer, and holy crap. Him and Brendan Fraser's Robot Man, aka Cliff Steve, they have the impossible task of acting without being seen in a way that you people could really pull off. Especially Larry Trainers had horrible backstory. His issues of sexual identity, his issues of guilt, PTSD, reflection. 90% of the time he's under bandages and you don't see, you just hear him and you just hear the pain in him, the giving up, but forced to keep going. And Cliff, Robot Man is so damn funny. He is a proxy to people being in circumstances similar to what they deal with. He's like if Hellboy was raunchier and just did not give a shit what people thought about him. He's so funny in that semblance. Javon Wade plays the perfect cyborg. And I say that as a person who is a hardcore fan of the 80s run of the New Teen Titans. He does it perfectly. Timothy Dalton plays Niles Calder and oh man, he's he's so good. He's got the perfect balance of mysterious and dark and twisted that only Timothy Dalton can play. It's it's no wonder he was a James Bond, probably the most underrated James Bond. Every time Timothy Dalton's on screen, he just grabs the attention of the audience, but does it in a way that feels organic and doesn't feel like he's trying to soak up all the attention. 
I... <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. This is not a show for everyone. In fact, I'd say a big chunk of people will probably not like it because it's just so weird. And it goes from, oh, you think it can't get weirder? It gets weirder. You think it can't get grosser? It gets grosser. It can't get more over the top and crazy. And it does. And I love it for it. I mean, there are literal butt monsters. And I'm not saying that with hyperbole. Like, literal walking butts. Eyeball. Eye trap mounts. That's the level of crazy that we're dealing with here. There are sex ghosts. There's a guy who gets superpowers from eating someone's hair. There's just... The most random shit you can really imagine. Each character and each story keeps you hooked with how crazy it gets. It gets so crazy to the point where you go, I don't know how they can top it, but they always seem to. Alan Tudyk playing Negative Man also, huge standout. One of the best adapted villains. He's like, if Deadpool was actually intelligent and not just a quippy asshole all the time, which I granted, I like Deadpool, but he gets irritating sometimes. Alan Tudyk's negative man though, mwah. he's like if that version was just such a dick to the audience <laughs> deliberately, and I love him for it. I believe that this is honestly one of the craziest, no, I'm gonna say it, this is the craziest superhero series of all time. And it is a show that you need to see in order to believe it. Now keep in mind, my, my rating is going to be based off of my own preconceived notion. And you may not like it, but it is my show. And I am pulling rank here. I give Doom Patrol four and a half out of five. Have you seen Doom Patrol? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, I'll see you next time.